Children of the Corn takes place in a small farming town in Nebraska called Gatlin. Right off the bat, all of the adults in town are ruthlessly murdered by the children who are taking their orders from the new child preacher that has come to town named Isaac. I wouldn't trust any child that would wear that hat not as a joke. The only kids that weren't involved in the massacre were Job and his sister Sarah. Sarah was blessed with the gift of sight and is able to draw prophetic pictures of things that are pretty much just happening right at the moment. Some pictures are from a little bit in the future, but not really far enough in the future to really do anything about it. But bless her heart, she's trying. Bert and Vicky are on their way across the country so Bert can start his medical internship. Bert and Vicky are going through a little bit of a rough patch in their relationship, and Vicky is trying way too hard to be fun and spontaneous. One, two, three. I can root for the Yankees from the beach. Vicky, please. Please just sit down. Oh, God, that's enough of that. We then meet Joseph, who's tired of Isaac and Malachi and is going to finally run away. But he decides to make his escape under cover of mid-afternoon and is caught laughably fast. Laughably, that is, until he gets his throat slit and thrown in front of Bert and Vicky's car. It's actually quite tragic, and I apologize for making light of it. So Malachi watches as Bert throws Joseph's body in the trunk and drives off to find help. Immediately after that, Malachi catches Job and Sarah playing in their old house and takes them to Isaac for their punishment. Isaac refuses to punish them because they weren't a part of the original plan to murder everyone, and because Sarah has the, the gift, gift of, of sight. sight. <sighs> yeah, Isaac, I was just about to say that. Anyways, like I was saying, he doesn't punish them because Sarah it's has the, the gift, gift of, of sight. sight. Damn it, Isaac! Let me do my job! Sarah has the gift of sight and has warned them of the interlopers' arrival. Gotcha, f She warned us of the coming of the interlopers. But once again, the drawing he's currently referring to shows Bert and Vicky's car on the way to Gatlin. I mean, that's all well and good, and the sight is a very important skill that was bestowed upon her by he who walks behind the rose. But Malachi already had this information with his regular sight a half hour ago and told Isaac as much. You know, Malachi, I think that Isaac only treats you that way just because of the way you look. So Bert and Vicky come upon a rundown gas station, and the old man who works it tells them that there's no gas and no phone. What you want to do is to go to Hemingport. About 19 miles down that right fork there. Pretty straightforward directions, but somehow Bert leaves on this, somehow finds his way in the middle of a cornfield, and then winds up back at the same damn gas station that he just left. How do you get that turned around that badly when your only direction was to go straight? <laughs> Classic Bert. So since Bert doesn't know the difference between his ass and a hole in the ground, they decide to take their chances in Gatlin and find a town that has clearly been abandoned for a very long time. Anybody home? Bert, this is somebody's house. I know, I know. I just want to use their phone. Found the phone. Matches the decor perfectly. All right, horror movie rule number one. If you knock on the door of a creepy old house and no one answers and the door is unlocked, you know. So let yourself in. Touch a bunch of stuff that doesn't belong to you. And be like super loud too. After walking through the entire house, they find Sarah playing in an upstairs room and she gives them information that should send Bert and Vicky hauling ass out of town. Are your mommy and daddy around? They're in the cornfield. What are they doing there? All the grown-ups are there. Working there though or having a meeting? No. Isaac put them there. Of course. This raises zero red flags for you two. You don't have any follow-up questions. So Bert decides it's best to head to Town Hall because if every other place is completely abandoned, then everyone's gotta be at the Town Hall. Back at the house, Sarah draws another one of her classic pictures. This one depicts Vicky being taken to the cornfield literally 30 seconds before she's taken to the cornfield. <laughs> Good job, Sarah. Just top-notch. Bert is wandering around town, still not really grasping the fact that something weird is going on. He also has zero awareness of the fact that the children are around every corner watching his every move. And this man's a doctor? I would hope he would be at least somewhat observant. Uh, derp. Derp. Derp, derp. Vicky! Damn, locked from the outside. So Bert runs into the church and right into the middle of some sort of ritual. 
We find that one of the children, Amos, is turning 19, and when the children reach that age, they are sacrificed to he who walks behind the rows. Bert tries to lecture him, and the children attack him and chase him out of the church. Now, as an adult who is regularly teased and mocked by children, I totally understand Bert's pain. Why did I wear a fanny pack that day? Stupid. You can let... Outlander! Get off! Go get him! You know, you children managed to organize a massive purge on every adult in town all in one afternoon. You should be able to catch Bert. Okay, Bert, first sweep the leg, and then hammer strike. And nut shot! The important thing is that he tried. So back at the corn, Malachi turns on Isaac and decides to offer him to he who walks behind the rose. And when Isaac is strung up, he who walks behind the rose turns into the most horrifying creature ever. 1980s digital effects. We are also treated to the manliest death scene in cinema history. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It's never easy when a child actor hits puberty in the middle of filming, but I think the director handled it pretty flawlessly. Malachi! He wants you too, Malachi. I mean, you can't even really notice it. So he who walks behind the roads was an all-powerful demon, and he was taken down by Bert? <laughs> oh, that is just embarrassing. <laughs> Not gonna live that one down. Guys wanna come live with us for a couple days? Hmm? How about a week? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, this is all sweet and everything, but you just know Isaac is coming back for one more final jump scare. And nope. Okay. Uh, movie's over. Get the hell out, I guess. <laughs>